welcome to this channel and today we are going to be looking at aquascaping which is a form of an underwater gardening that we have and you can see here these are my tanks which are aquascape tanks which have like real life plants living and flourishing under the water now this video is mainly about clearing the idea and basically for beginners to understand how and how uh, basically what happens in aquascaping and how do one start in this particular hobby now in this video we will be covering main points that is going to be the plants next thing is the soil then we are going to be looking at the fertilization and then it would be propagation of the wood then co2 injection and how do i maintain these tanks regularly to keep them clean as you can see if they are so firstly talking about plants so as you can see here we have like many different types of plants that i have in my tanks here and the way this hobby has uh, grown and the way aquascaping has become famous it has given the hobbyist hands on many different type of plants right from every corner of the world like this one comes from south america and this one comes from indonesia so these all have been very easy to get their hands on and in these types of plants if i have classified on a broad, broad classification i can classify them as ferns and epiphytes these are the plants which grow alongside the streams the rocks which are there around the stream these plants grow on those rocks but these plants are very capable of actually acclimatizing yet to be growing underwater also and then we have the stem plants the stem plants are very much like our uh, ground plants that we have they just grow they come out with different different shoots they keep on growing as as a manure trim trimming is the key to make them bushy as you can see here and the next one would be the mosses the mosses is something that we see on the uh, the tropical areas the mosses different types of mosses so aquatic mosses are something different you also have different types of aquatic mosses that you can grow and the next one would be the algae that grows so algae is something that you wouldn't want to have in your tank but that is something that you cannot run as you grow you have an imbalanced tank and algae would be in your tank so that's one thing which you need to take care of that to avoid the algae and Yes, so this uh, covers the classification of different types of plants that we have in this hobby. Now, the second key element that we need to talk about is the soil. As you can see, in this about 50-60 liter tank of mine, I have about 10 liters of soil added in this tank. But then the main uh, key about this uh, type of soil is what we call it as aqua soil. This is diff very different from what you get, what we use for our garden. This is a special type of soil which is mainly meant only for aquariums, wherein it doesn't contain the kind of organic matter which is there in the uh, in the garden soil, and that helps in maintaining the ammonia level down. It does have some, but then in a very controlled manner, which doesn't affect the fishes and the other plants. And this one doesn't make the water muggy. As you can see, if you have a little bit of garden soil and you just add a little bit of water, no matter what you try, the water remains muggy. So this one helps. in avoiding that murkiness and the second one is that it helps you to buffer the ph no matter what is there in the tank because a lot of chemicals get added in the tank in the process of fertilization and then co2 but whenever we add so it helps in balancing the ph ranges so if you get different brands of aqua soils uh, in the market these are pretty much more expensive than what we get for the uh, the grass garden soil but totally worth it whatever the price you pay for this The next key element that we'll be talking about is fertilization. Fertilization is key for these plants to grow in the manner that they grow, get the colors that they need to uh, exhibit, and the overall health of the tank. Now, in this uh, way of fertilization, also we have the same two uh, types of fertilizers that we need to do. One is the macro nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and the other one is micro, which uh, includes all the micro elements that we need, right? And in which Iron is something which uh, aquascapers mainly look for for exhibiting the colors out in this. And in this, like I would like to show this bottle. So this is of one uh, particular brand, which is an all-in-one fertilizer, which contains macro as well as micro. Other than this, there were there are other fertilizers also which you get individually for nitrogen, phosphorus, and uh, potassium. And then you would have again micro elements. in certain uh, proportions at different bottles again so you could do either an all in one which is a little bit easier to manage or a very uh, specific one which you can get different bottles for and then according to the uh, dosage mentioned and the tax uh, load of uh, what plants it holds you can actually uh, start off with the fertilization for it 
next main component that we are going to talk about is the lights. And these lights are specialized uh, lights for the plant and plants, wherein these try to mimic what the sunlight uh, gives. And that's where it makes the uh, plants look as beautiful as they are. Right now, if I remove this light and place a white light like this onto this tank, plants wouldn't look as vibrant as they are looking right now. It's not that the plant has changed or anything, but it's the light, what it makes the plant look is what is more important. And this, that's where the price is also like for these uh, lights. But it costs, um, it's totally worth it every penny, whatever you put in. And these are the lights which also help in the photosynthesis uh, to happen even more efficiently, as you can see. And now for all these fishes, the oxygen that is uh, given into the tank is mainly due to the photosynthesis that happens through the plants and the oxygen that is released into the tank. So the light plays a very vital role in this whole process. For all these plants to photosynthesize, they need the light which is available. They need the nutrition which is available for the soil and the fertilizer. And the next main element that it requires is the CO2. Now CO2 can be given uh, which is already uh, available in the uh, tank uh, water which it gets but the proportion is very less and in order for the plants to photosynthesize uh, more efficiently that's where we get the CO2 through external system so this is the diffuser that we get and from this the CO2 is uh, broken down into very fine bubbles so that the tank water is able to absorb it better and the CO2 level is maintained to an optimum level such that the uh, plants are able to use it now the tanks and all these plants in my tank look good and the main reason is the, for reason is the light, the soil, the fertilization and the most importantly the CO2 that it gets. Next we are going to talk about propagation of these plants and how you multiply these and how you basically get a bushy uh, tank that you need. When we look at this tank, I haven't about 100 stems of these plants, 100 stems of that plant and have planted it and able to get this mass inside the tank. But what I have been doing is that I get this one stem, if, uh, if you can see, trim it, again replant it, trim it, replant it. The propagation in the aquatic world is the most easiest uh, if you can uh, think of. What we do in the garden is there is a, a very, uh, what to say, for with me it has been a very 20, 80 percent, uh, but many others they have a very high, uh, uh, what do you call it, the success rate. But then in these plants, I have almost a 90 to 10 percent of the success rate. So 90 percent being the success rate and 10 percent where I pay. So that is what helps me in actually growing all these plants over here and here. And it's just about trim and replant. And when you trim, same like what we get in our uh, garden plants, from the place where we trim, the node actually gets initiated and from there you would start getting multiple shoots and that's what has been happening in all these plants over here whenever i trim i replant the other stem now we, i am uh, having two steps in my tank and from the trim stem i again get a couple of more so that's how it becomes from one to two two to four four to sixteen and that's way uh, that's how you start uh, growing them in such high number when you look at this tank the fishes look healthy plants look healthy and the water is pretty clear and the main factor which actually uh, does this job is the filters. Now with the filters a lot of people have this misconception that the filter is mainly for clear, keeping the water clear. That is true but then the major work that uh, filters actually do is mainly uh, making the water safe for the fishes rather than making clear for the fishes it's about making water safe for the fishes. So fish poop and leftover poop and all this actually release up ammonia and this ammonia is very harmful for the fishes so that's when people get the uh, fish tank they add the fishes and they die immediately because the fish release poop and that poop is releasing ammonia and the fishes die due to the excess of ammonia in the tank so now what the filter does is that when you let it run for about a month or so it actually starts uh, colonizing uh, uh, what you call bacteria inside it two types of bacteria uh, aerobic and anaerobic and these bacteria actually converts whenever the water goes through it it actually picks up the ammonia and the uh, fish poop ammonia is converted into the uh, nitrites nitrites are then further again goes to the same similar process with the different types of bacteria and they are converted into nitrates and nitrates are released back into the filter in the tank and that nitrate is harmless to that for the fishes so that's where for a healthy tank you need a proper and very effective filter and which is well set at least for about a month and in these two tanks i didn't have fishes for about two to three months 
and I let the filter uh, settle in properly and that's when later I added fishes and fishes look pretty heavy here and the fish health can be always identified by the color that they exhibit and with the fish colors that you see they are pretty bright which means that the fish is healthy one of the most common questions that gets asked about uh, fish keeping and maybe the tank variants is that how do you maintain these tanks because when they look at the plants in this they ask how do you uh, reduce the whole water how do you clean them so that is the biggest mistake that people uh, do in fish keeping is where they reduce the entire water clean the tanks and then refill them up and after they put the fishes back in they kind of die and then they think that no fishes are not something that is we are able to keep and because that is the biggest mistake that you can do in uh, fish tank maintenance the maximum that you need to reduce is about say 50 percent of water every week and then refill it back because the tank water to be clean and everything is should be happening through your filters and what needs you need to be doing is maybe just reducing the 30 to 40 percent of water every week and refilling it back so that is what helps in keeping the nutrients in control because the fish they poop and that's what gets into the uh, tank and the fish poop acts as a fertilizer to the uh, your uh, uh, plants and again the fish food that you put that also the leftovers come down that reduces ammonia and that's what is taken care of by the filter but then whenever you do a weekly maintenance it's just about reducing the water to about 50 to 30 percent so that the excess ammonia or the excess nutrients that are there in the tank whatever gets left over by the soil or by the fish food rotten fish food or by the fish uh, poop everything comes out in that 50 percent so that the tank is balanced so that's what is about mainly maintaining the tank and maintaining, uh, maintaining its uh, clarity. So the clarity is about the filter. But then always remember to, uh, do not reduce it more than 50% while clearing. No need to uh, what you call, wash it with uh, inside the tank and outside the tank. It is, it is just, just clean the glass from inside using a cloth, a clean cloth, and just refill the water back and leave the rest of the filtration.